Hi friends, today we are going to read a story called Animals, Tools for Survival. This is on page six of your booklet. Please make sure you also have a pencil and a highlighter. Today's story is an informational science story. Now, if you look at the pictures and you look at the subheadings, you'll notice that the things that it's going to talk about are real things. So webbed feet, and you can see that photograph of a duck. So we might learn some facts about webbed feet. You can see sharp claws and the sloth is using its claws to hang from the branches. If you look at page eight and page nine, you can see some more um, photographs of animals and we're going to learn about whiskers, large beaks, and long tails. And then this final paragraph has a, right after it, has a chart that talks about um, all the different animal body parts and what they do. So all these things tell us that this is a non-fiction text, an informational science text. While we are reading, we are going to underline key details and then we will write a few main ideas. So when you're ready, we will get started. Short read two. Remember to annotate as you read. Animals' Tools for Survival by Sue Cheen Almost everything about an animal's body is a physical adaptation. The Milwaukee Zoo has an animal adaptations lab. On a recent tour there, students learned that webbed feet, sharp claws, whiskers, large beaks, and long tails are adaptations found in many animals. These adaptations help animals survive. The lab doesn't stop there. The free eight-week program, which runs every fall and spring, allows students to do hands-on studies of adaptations for eating, defense, and locomotion. Here's what a recent group discovered. All right, so let's stop there. We have some things to highlight. So it kind of lets us know that there is a zoo in Milwaukee that has an animal adaptations lab. Now that's interesting, but it's not really super important to what we're going to be reading about. What we're going to be reading about is the adaptations that some animals have. So I see the words webbed feet, sharp claws, whiskers, large beaks, and long tails. So let's highlight that. And let's also highlight our adaptations found in many animals so we know exactly what those are. And I know, because I already previewed my text, that it I'm going to be learning about each one of these sections. So I want you to put the pencil on, or the cap on your highlighter, and let's write a quick main idea for this introduction paragraph. So over here on page six, let's write our main idea. Okay, so we learned, now remember, we're not gonna focus on the zoo, but we learned that animals do what? They use adaptations to survive, right? And maybe we should actually go back and highlight this part too. These adaptations help animals survive. Whoopsie. Okay. 
Okay, so main idea. So we know that animals use adaptations to survive. Okay, and then we're going to write a main idea for each one of these sections. So then we'll be able to talk about what specific um, adaptations the animals have that help them survive. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and keep reading. First section, webbed feet. Webbed feet. Ducks and polar bears are born with webbed feet. They have skin or webbing stretched between their toes. This webbing allows the feet to paddle the body through water with ease. It helps animals save energy, too. Ducks, like polar bears, use their large webbed feet to move quickly through water. Webbed feet help different animals in different ways. Polar bears use webbed feet to swim faster. Flying frogs use webbed feet to glide through the air. Polar bears can swim a 100 kilometer, 62 mile stretch thanks to webbing. Flying frogs can glide through the air up to 15 meters, 50 feet, with their webbed toes. All right, so we learned about three animals that have webbed feet that help them in their daily life. So first of all, what are webbed feet? If we go back to paragraph two, it says they, are, they have skin or webbing stretched between their toes. So that's what webbed feet are, and it allows them to paddle their body through the water with ease. Like ease means it's easy. And it helps save energy too because it helps them swim faster or glide through the air. So pretty cool. So three totally different animals that have webbed feet that they use in their daily life. Okay, so let's put our cap on and let's write our next main idea. So we're going to write it, just skip a few lines. We're gonna write it on page skip six, so skip a few lines. I'm gonna do it closer to where I wrote webbed feet. And we learned that, whoops, webbed feet help animals what? Go ahead and pause the video. They help animals do what? Did you say something like travel through the water and air, right? So the water, like the ducks and the polar bear, the air, like the frog, without using as much energy. So make sure you have something about them traveling through water and air and that it helps save time and energy. They go much faster. All right, if you need to pause the video and catch up, you may, otherwise we're gonna keep going. Sharp claws. A claw is a body part at the end of an animal's toe. Claws are different from nails. Claws have sharp points. Claws have many uses. Like webbed feet, they help animals move faster. Unlike webbed feet, they also help animals climb and hang in trees. Adding traction, a cheetah's sharp claws help make it the fastest land animal in the world. The three-toed sloth is the slowest land animal. 
its sharp claws help it hang from tree branches for long periods. Okay, I like that it shows um, the fastest land animal and the slowest land animal. Two extremes here. But it's interesting because both of those animals have claws. So first, let's highlight what is a claw. A claw is a body part at the end of an animal's toe. Okay, and they're not nails because they have sharp points. And it kind of compared them to web feet. So they help animals move faster, right? But what's the other thing they do? Go ahead and pause the video and highlight the other thing that they do. It says they also help animals climb trees and hang in trees like that sloth, right? Okay, so put your highlighter down and let's write another main idea. So we learned that claws help animals move faster and what else? Go ahead and finish this sentence. Climb and hang in trees. All right, if you need to pause the video, go ahead. Otherwise, we're gonna keep going. Turn the page. Whiskers. Whiskers are long, thick hairs. They are very sensitive because they are attached to nerves in the skin. The whiskers detect movement in air or water. This triggers the nerves to send alert signals to the brain. Whiskers can help animals move around or navigate. They also help animals detect danger or locate prey. Sea lions use whiskers to detect faraway sounds and motion underwater. The fox has facial and wrist whiskers to help it navigate and hunt at night. Wow, that's pretty interesting, right? The fox has facial and wrist whiskers to help it navigate and hunt at night. I didn't know that. Pretty fascinating, right? I like this little picture of the sea lion, too. Okay, so whiskers. What are whiskers? So it says that whiskers are long, thick hairs, and they're very sensitive. Have you ever touched like a dog's whiskers or a cat's whiskers? Do they like it? Not really, right? Okay. Um, so they're very sensitive, right? Because they are attached to the nerves in their skin. So they're not just pieces of hair. They are attached to the nerves that run through their body. And they detect movement so they can seek out movement. So that's what helps that fox in the air or the water, and then it triggers the brain, right? They get The brain gets a signal and it triggers it. And it also helps animals move around or navigate and detect danger or locate prey. Oh my gosh, so many different things that these whiskers do. Pretty fascinating, right? So go ahead and grab your pencil and we'll write our next main idea about whiskers. So whiskers, what would you say they do for an animal to survive? They help animals move around, detect danger, and what? What's that last one? And locate prey. So locate their dinner. 
All right, let's move on to large beaks. Large beaks. A beak is the hard outer part of a bird's mouth. Some birds, such as herons and pelicans, use their large beaks to catch fish. Others, such as macaws and toucans, use them to reach hard-to-get food. Macaws use their beaks to crack open nuts and fruit. Toucans can reach and toss fruit with their long beaks. All right, so now moving on to beaks. What did we learn about beaks? We learned that, first we'd say, what are they? They're the hard outer part of a bird's mouth. And I want you to pause the video and highlight what do these large beaks do? They catch fish and they reach hard to get food. All right, put your highlighter down. Let's write our next main idea. Go ahead and write your next main idea close to this section. So large beaks, that's the adaptation. What do they do? Help birds eat and get their food. Excellent. Okay, last one. I'm going to re read paragraph seven and the two captions to you, and then I'm going to have you highlight on your own. Long tails. A long tail helps some animals keep their bodies balanced. It can also help them steer. Other animals use their long tails like an extra hand to grab onto things. Squirrels use their long tails to stay balanced. Some monkeys, unlike squirrels, use their tails to swing in trees. All right, so why don't you, whoops, why don't you highlight what does a long tail do? There are three things that it describes that a long tail does. So go ahead and pause the video and highlight. All right, so long tails help animals keep their bodies balanced, help them steer, and use them like an extra hand to grab onto things. I like this picture of this monkey who looks so relaxed, doesn't it? Okay, so long tails are used in many ways to help animals. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to keep reading. We have one little last paragraph, and then it's going to read this chart to us. Whiskers. Whiskers Oops. are long, thick hair. On, on land, in water, or high up in trees, each animal's adapted body part helps it survive. I think that this last paragraph is pretty important. It kind of just tells us that each adapted body part helps an animal survive. So grab your highlighters and let's highlight this whole sentence. And now let's read our chart. Animal body parts. Body part. Animal. Function. Webbed feet. Duck. Polar bear. Flying frog. Swimming. Swimming, gliding. Claws. Cheetah, 
three-toed sloth. Running, hunting, climbing, hanging. Whiskers. Sea lion, Patagonian fox. Sensing danger in water or finding prey. Hunting at night. Large beak. Heron, pelican, macaw, toucan. Spearing fish. Scooping fish. Cracking open nuts and fruit. Reaching and tossing fruit. Long tail. Monkey. Squirrel. Climbing and swinging on trees. Keeping balance and leaping. All right, so I like this chart because it shows all the different animals that we touched upon and how they use their body part to function and survive. So this is a great resource to use um, when you're talking about animal adaptations. All right, that's it for our lesson today, friends. Great job. We'll see you later.